Roll up, roll up, ladies, gentlemen, and others. Welcome to Triple Jump Park. Please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicles at all times, because they're the rules, and if you don't, I'll have to rules boss. There's a lot that video games can do with a theme park when it comes to story ideas and locations. In and of themselves, they are exciting and magical places to be, even for adults. However, they also have a dark side, both as a safety risk and because they're 100 times scarier in the middle of the night. Kind of like clowns. We've already covered on this channel possible additions to the Super Nintendo World theme park, but now it's time that we talked about ones that already exist, albeit trapped within the pixelized realities of gaming. While real-life parks are meticulously crafted worlds of slickly operating wonder and magic, with reams of safety procedures and guest satisfaction as a priority, the ones that appear in video games often leave a lot to be desired. So let's learn all about them. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video game theme parks we'd hate to visit. Number 10. Pinner Park, Super Mario Sunshine. Super Nintendo World isn't Mario's first rodeo, and by rodeo we mean theme park, and by theme park we mean hazard. Pinner Park has all your typical fairground fair. A ferris wheel, clamshell teacups, a roller coaster, a Yoshi go round, and swinging pirate ships. Just your normal, run of the mill seaside amusement park right? <laughs> Wrong. Because the place is a bloody death trap. Although bloody death trap might actually be run of the mill for you, depending on where you spent your summer holidays. It's not my place to judge. Anyway, the point is that whoever designed Pinna Park clearly has no concept of crowd control, with the island only accessible via a large cannon on the foreshore. The worst part is that being shot out of that cannon might be the least dangerous thing about your trip. The ferris wheel is fast enough to deserve a speeding ticket, and the pirate ships manage to achieve every child's ultimate dream and ultimate fear of spinning all the way round. The coaster is surprisingly safe, but that safety is kind of negated when there's a giant mecha Bowser wreaking havoc nearby. Also, it costs 10 shine sprites to get in. Do you know what I had to go through to get those? Oh, I'm taking my custom elsewhere. Number 9. Lakeside Amusement Park, Silent Hill Mascot costumes have a bit of a bad reputation thanks to games, movies, creepypastas, and, well, real life. Lakeside Amusement Park has an innocent enough name, it even shares it with an actual park in Colorado, but that's where the innocence ends. In the normal world, Lakeside Amusement Park is a paradise for children, but in the other world, it's something that would mentally scar any hardened adult who stepped inside. Like Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy, Lakeside has its own mascot. Robbie the Rabbit, and oh boy, whoever owns that suit is going to have to pay for some serious dry cleaning. Lakeside is more populated than Pinner Park, but that just means it's ten times as deadly. If you manage to survive being crushed by the haunted mansion's spiked ceiling, then you'll probably be killed by the insta-death red mist that permeates the building. For those who'd rather not risk their lives, though, there is at least the Happy Carousel, which has real-life horses kebab on poles, meaning it technically doubles as a special kind of petting zoo. Ah, oh, that's nice, it just smells a lot worse than the usual sort. Number 8. Del Diablo Amusement Park – Nightmare Circus Putting aside negligence and psychological horror, apparently the scariest thing that can occur in a theme park is insurance fraud. Del Diablo Amusement Park was more of a circus, as you might be able to tell from the game's name, but it calls itself an amusement park, so it's going on the list anyway. Del Diablo was burned to the ground on opening night by its owner, the Jester, to cash in on an insurance policy. Years later, a ghost-busting Native American named Raven turns up at the remains of the circus, which are still there because, 
Well, I don't really know why, to be honest. This should have been cleared up ages ago. What the hell am I paying my council tax for? The park is now a hollowed out wreck, although the roller coaster, dodgems, and chainsaw wielding maniac all seem to be running fine, along with whatever these things are on the walls. Mini figure arms, maybe? Is, is this Legoland? Uh, you know what? I think I'll just play it safe and head straight for the fun house. Oh, a oh, whole lot of fun. Prizes to be won. Oh, I feel sick. Number seven. Dr. Quandry's Carnival, the secret island of Dr. Quandry. Common sense dictates that if a rickety shooting gallery is being run by a man who calls himself the quintessential quiz master, don't trust it. He might not necessarily be evil, but he's probably at least a little bit pretentious. Unsurprisingly, what the quiz master has on offer at this weird monochromatic carnival is actually a dirty trick, resulting in him sucking you up into the body of a doll and throwing you into the sea. You then wash up on the shore of his secret island which I assume is some kind of tax haven, and are tasked with getting your body back. You must work against Dr. Quandry, as well as surfer dudettes, tax collectors who speak in uwu, and saxophones with sunglasses. Granted, the island itself isn't actually an amusement park, so that part doesn't actually count, but the black and white carnival at the start of the game, with its dodgy looking prizes and evil huckster in charge, definitely isn't worth the price of admission which is saying a lot because it's free. The worst part, though, is that making your way through the titular island involves solving a bunch of maths and logic puzzles, learning about factors, number sequences, division, and... You know, honestly, my brain switched off as soon as I started saying this sentence. This is a video game channel. I do not need maths lessons. Number nine. I mean, number six. Nuco World. Fallout 3. I mean, four. Shut up. Excluding a few collaborations with Disneyland, it really is rather miraculous that we've been spared a fast food theme park. They'll get around to it eventually, I'm sure, but for now, the Nuka World DLC for Fallout 4 will have to do. Most of the previous entries have been more along the lines of seaside fairgrounds or small town carnivals, but Nuka World is a full on Disneyland sized theme park. Prior to the nuclear apocalypse, it had six different zones and 31 different attractions. Not just the old favourites of the Ferris wheel, teacups and carousel, but also a roller coaster, a cola themed mountain, a fun house, oh not again please I still feel queasy, a full size gingerbread cottage, a shovel museum, and the world's largest fire hydrant. The downside to Nuka World is it was actually a front for a military funded biochemical warfare lab. Exploring it you'll find combat robots, soft drinks containing radioactive isotopes, and a private vault for the still living head of the park's founder, Walt Disney. I mean, John Caleb Bradburton. As of 2287, Nuka World has become a raider camp, albeit one with quirkier houses than usual. Sure, pre-war Nuka World looked like a fun place if you made sure not to drink any Nuka Cola Quantum, but you know something has gone wrong when things get to the point that you're actually safer just staying out in the nuclear wasteland and fighting things that are literally called Death Claws. Number 5. Atlantic Island Park. The Park. Swan right, swan right, swan right. Oh, excuse me, force of habit. Taking inspiration from Lakeside's disarming name and lovable mascots, Atlantic Island Park is also a mess. I'm not even going to pretend that it's not, because look at it. Funded and run by Tycoon, rejected Illuminati member, yes really, and literal supernatural monster Nathaniel Winter, the park was built on a nexus of supernatural power that literally no one is able to control. Typical of most houses and hotels that are built on incredibly haunted ground, numerous accidents and incidents ended up killing a number of workers and park guests, as well as driving the man inside the Chad the Chipmunk costume to insanity and murder. God, we're just lucky the man inside the Coco the Gorilla costume was stopped before a similar incident could happen again. Winters now lives in the park, operating the Octotron, House of Horrors, the Roller Coaster, and the Swan Ride! Uh, sorry, Tunnel of Tales, in the hope that some hapless souls will 
will wander in, allowing him to absorb their fear and joy. So, very much not a place to spend a bank holiday Monday, then. Oh, hang on, why is Nightmare Circus here? That's an entry within an entry. Oh, let's move on. Number 4. Inkwell Isle 2. Cuphead. Finally, a place that is relatively fun. Okay, well, fun is debatable, considering its owners still want you dead, but at least it's not more horses on spikes. The entrance to the second Inkwell Isle is a small shoreside funfair that is, for once, not entirely abandoned, haunted, or covered in viscera. Hooray! The circus is run by Beppy the Clown, who operates a funfair, funhouse, and a roller coaster. This roller coaster is extra fun, with bumper cars, balloon animals, and a carousel, which are all somehow allowed to operate 50 meters up in the air. God, it's like being at a Merlin Entertainment Park. Over on the other side, Sugarland is a themed kingdom of gumballs, waffles, cupcakes, and a horrifying living castle, ruled over by Baroness von Bon Bon Bon. Bon. Next door, Jimmy the Great, a literal magical genie, runs a maze come haunted house populated by his various mummies, puppets, and Illuminati pyramids. Sorry, how have the Illuminati managed to appear twice in this list? Anyway, I take back everything I said at the start of the entry. This could have been fun for all the family if every single creature and object weren't trying to kill you. It's kind of a rule of thumb I tend to work by when choosing where to take my nephew for the afternoon. Number 3. Pirate Island – Detroit Become Human Welcome to Pirate Island, me hearties! You're gonna have a whale of a time! And you're also… you're also going to die. That's not a pirate pun, you're just legitimately going to die. Pirate Island, or Pirate's Cove if you want to get Detroit Become Human wiki about this, was a pirate-themed adventure park that was left to rot for not really any discernible reason. Whatever the cause, though, it seemingly happened so quickly that the owners forgot to take their dozens of jerrys with them. Standing empty in the snow and ice-covered wastes of the middle of nowhere, comma, Detroit, Pirate's Cove isn't actually seen very much in the game, and I mean that in a literal sense. The parts that you do visit are massively obscured thanks to the darkness and wild weather. However, the concept art for the game gives us a better view of the place. Certain areas of the park have cool entrances, like a giant pirate skull and this guy here, and beyond them you'll find a roller coaster, a fun fair, a ferris wheel, and the fortune teller from Big. Oh man, I wonder if he can make me any bigger. The map also shows yet another pirate pirate boat swing, and more dodgems. Or bumper cars, depending on where you come from. God, I've never really thought about it before, but dodgems sounds like one of those made-up piss-take British words, despite actually being a real one. There's even a tent icon here that suggests the existence of clowns. Granted, they might have just dressed a jerry up in a red nose and wig, but either way, I'm very much steering clear. In fact, you might say, if there are any clowns here, I will dodge them. <laughs> Number 2. Uranus Zone – Dead Rising 2 – Off the Record with a name like Uranus Zone, how could we not stick it in? Uranus Zone, I'm never going to get tired of saying that, is an amusement park within the ironically named Fortune City, now overrun by zombies. It has a number of big ticket rides, including the UFO Crash Freefaller and the Galactic Glide Swinging Boats. However, someone seems to have either foreseen the zombie apocalypse or had their own nefarious goals in mind, because a lot of the rides have been special designed to kill people. This is good news for Frank West, who can easily mow down zombies with them, but not very good news for general day-to-day -day park goers who presumably used to come here in their hundreds or thousands before the apocalypse. For the smaller attractions of Uranus Zone, there's the Mole Men from Uranus Whack-A-Mole game, which allows you to use your own sledgehammer, and several other sideshows where you throw tomahawks, baseballs, footballs, and hunks of meat at offending aliens. But it doesn't just have rides and games. There are even several creatively named stores, including Space, the clothes shop, Players, the music shop, Bagged, the handbag shop, and The Man's Sport, the sport shop. Wow, that certainly is a lot of things to find 
in your age. And number one, Cartoon Wasteland Epic Mickey. Hey, who wants to go to Disneyland? Well, you can't, because Mickey ruined it for everyone. Unsure what to do with all of the horses, ghosts, gorillas, playing cards, and other miscellaneous characters that the corporation has discarded over the years, Walt Disney self-insert, Yen Sid, formed a haven to let them live happily ever after in obscurity, ruled over by Mickey Mouse precursor, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. The cartoon wasteland was built to resemble Disneyland and its attractions, and it did right up to the point that Mickey managed to Mr. Bean the entire thing and transform Cinderella's castle, It's a Small World, Adventureland, The Haunted Mansion, The Matterhorn, Tomorrowland, and Main Street into warped and twisted versions of themselves overrun with gremlins, ink monsters, and corrupted animatronics. The rides are all broken down, the streets and buildings have chunks missing, and he's tried to rectify the whole thing by drawing a horrible face over the smudge mark. Oh wait, no, that's Mr. Bean again. Of course, the whole place gets fixed up after the events of Epic Mickey, but even then, accessing the restored park will always involve either breaking into a powerful wizard's house, or getting forgotten by society as a whole and taken in along with all the other waifs and strays. So on balance, you're probably better off planning a trip to the real Disneyland. You know, when we're actually allowed to go again.